Hello everyone, today I am presenting a PCR which happened in a posterior polar case. You can see the rent margins are visible clearly and there is some leftover cortex which I am expelling out with the help of visco and that came out easily just because there was no much of vitreous disturbance. So let's see how I managed this case. I am sweeping the iris repositor and there is some amount of vitreous tags however it is not disturb too much so initially not a problem so we'll be discussing the management of PCR how I did what I did and what all things have to be taken care of and what were my settings in this case As I always say that you have to do a closed chamber vitrectomy and I did by manual anterior vitrectomy and the settings uh, for my vitrectomy were that during the initial when I am cutting the vitreous it is the cut I mode the cutter is at 2500 cuts per second and uh, the vacuum is around 100 and aspiration is around 50 and when I am aspirating it is on a cut mode and the cutter this time I had uh, made it to 10 and the vacuum was around 400 and the aspiration was again 15 and now see I am in the cut IA mode that means my cutter is working and there is no much of aspiration so all I am doing here is I am initially cutting the vitreous so that when I am doing irrigation aspiration uh, uh, when I am doing IA cut not irrigation and aspiration so I would be aspirating this cortex without pulling much of the vitreous so initially you have to take time you have to cut vitreous before just jumping on to aspirate that cortex because it is very important initially to cut the vitreous first and then do a cortical aspiration because if vitreous is there and you will be doing aspiration then you would be pulling the cortex and causing a traction to retina. Now see I am in IA cut mode. I had cut some amount of vitreous. Now I am, I am in IA cut mode and in between whenever I found difficulty I changed my uh, settings to again cut IA mode. Now again I am in cut IA mode. I tried to aspirate but I then felt that there is some traction. So I again went in cut IA mode. Now again I am doing vitrectomy and so these things you have to just interchange in between the cut IA and IA cut mode. So I guess everybody knows that the cut IA mode is for cutting the vitreous and IA cut mode is for aspiration of the cortex that is left behind. So since this cortex was fine and thin, so that was the reason why I had just switched off my cutter or I had made that to just a setting of 10 and I just wanted to aspirate the cortex and uh, see uh, I am again in IA cut mode and I am aspirating the cortex and after cutting the vitreous it becomes easy to aspirate these leftover cortical pieces. If nuclear small fragments remain, removal of these fragments can be attempted with the tractor and the cut rate can be uh, made to 250 to 300 cuts per minute and increasing the available vacuum. But here since I had no nuclear fragment left, the only thing that was left behind were thin cortical fibers. So I reduced my cut rate to 10 and my aspiration was 20 again 
and vacuum was around 400. Now I change hands to remove cortex from the other side and now you will be seeing that as I was aspirating this cortex I suddenly changed to cut IMO to cut this but as I did this there was a very small uh, flake of cortex that went into the vitreous cavity however this is a very small flake but ideally this should not have happened if I would have continued in the I cut mode itself but just changing here to cut eye mode just to have that cutter effect to aspirate and cut that piece I thought that I would be using a cut eye mode but this caused breaking of that small cortical remnant into pieces and one of the flakes went into the vitreous cavity so what is advisable here is that if you should be gentle and preferably aspirate these fine cortex only in eye cut mode where your cutter is actually having a less rate like here I put it at 10 and your vacuum is again at uh, 400 so probably that is better to aspirate rather than putting it back into the cut eye mode. Once you are through with vitrectomy, you should always check your ports because what happens is you do a vitrectomy, you feel your vitrectomy is complete but still some tags of vitreous are there at the ports and that is what causes hypotony the very next day and you at times if you are doing an SICS what happens is even you feel that your wound integrity is fine but still you end up taking up sutures just because there is vitreous still in the wounds. So before you progress for implanting IOL and after completing vitrectomy, it is very important to check your wounds for any vitreous left.
in my PCR cases, I always extend my main incision a little because my intention here is that I should open that three-piece foldable lens into the interior chamber. Because if you would not enlarge this incision and if you are just injecting the IOL from the incision itself, what happens is at times this IOL it unfolds itself directly into the vitreous, uh, I mean that rent area and one becomes panicky and is stressed at that moment that the lens or IOL might fall. So what I would advise is always enlarge your incision and take your injector slightly into the interior chamber and open your IOL into the interior chamber above the iris and after that you can easily reposit one of the heptics one by one. Now watch here, there is some kind of a peaking in one side, so I was in doubt whether there is vitreous or not. So what I did initially, I tried sweeping the iris repositor, but when I did sweep the iris repositor, I could not find any vitreous in that area. So then what next, see I am sweeping the iris repositor in that area, but I couldn't find any vitreous tags. So what is lifting that iris, what is pulling that iris? Probably one of my haptics is not in the sulcus, is not in the right plane and that is what is causing iris to be to have that eccentric configuration on one side and now see I would be dialing and placing my uh, this heptic properly and as I would dial this the pupil will become circular and that again proves that there was no vitreous now you can see the pupil is circular and just rotating this IOL caused this pupil to become circular so you have to analyze whether it is the vitreous or whether it is because of the heptics or IL positioning that Iris was having that eccentric constant configuration. And what I have said so many times that you don't really require transignone to stain. However, many may disagree, but still I would recommend on this platform for beginners, if you are in doubt, don't hesitate to use transignone to stain. But Vitreous is very well seen. You have telltale signs to show that vitreous is there, and like I showed in many of my old videos, that you can see those strands of vitreous. And either you may not be able to center your IOL, or there may be some peaking of iris, or your wound may be unstable, leaky. So, these are all signs that suggest that vitreous is still there, and then you require some more anti vitrectomy. So after placing the lens, I did an irrigation and aspiration because vitrectomy was done, all cortex was aspirated and now you can see the IL was in sulcus, nicely centered and now just to show others because I was very sure that there is no vitreous, one could use pilocarpine and that would again constrict this pupil and would demonstrate and it would be a second proof to show that there was no vitreous left. Lifting pilocarpine, the pupil has constricted and it is a circular pupil and now there is no vitreous left. So this case was nicely managed after having a PCR in a PPC case.